for a show of hands. How many people are here from Hong Kong Island? Okay, uh, anybody here live in Shen Shui Po? Just me again? By day, Michael Dorsha rubs shoulders with the business people that pump out the lifeblood of Hong Kong success. By night, it's a whole different story. You don't have to worry about me at all, because even living in Sham Shui Po, I live in by far the safest apartment in the area. Because to get to my place, you have to walk up 10 flights of stairs. <laughs> Think about it, people. Who's going to rob me? And he has a little help from his friends. I can learn something about my culture. So I went to the studio, I was looking at the courses that they had, and one of the courses was called Learn to Breathe. What are the classes like? You know, you walk in, it's like, Hello, welcome to Learn to Breathe. Lesson one, inhale. Now hold that for next week, lesson two, exhale. Really? I mean, what are the exams like? If you don't suffocate, you pass. Hi everybody, I'm Tanya. This is my real voice, not my fake voice. I really need to talk like this all the time. There are some jobs that I can never do. For example, I could never be a drill sergeant, right? Imagine me yelling out commands. Okay, maggots, drop that and give me 20 push-ups. Now! You call that push-up. My grandma could do that and she's dead. What's that? You don't feel like doing push-ups? You don't feel like doing push-ups? Michael, Vivek and Tonya are very much part of the multicultural crowd here at Lan Kwai Fong in Hong Kong. And because they're comics, they can make jokes that go down very well with people from the United States, from Canada, from the rest of Asia. And those sort of jokes are shown right here at this bar in Hong Kong. It probably makes this bar something a unique location. Yes, that's right. These people aren't just, say, economists, as in Michael's case. They're stand-up comedians. Six years ago, Michael swapped Minnesota for Hong Kong, but that didn't mean leaving his love of laughter behind. It doesn't matter what your background is. There is no kind of prerequisite. Nobody goes to college for pre-comedy and then you know, studies and gets their comedian's degree. Um, everybody brings whatever knowledge that they have and their perspective on the world that that knowledge gives them into the jokes and the stories that they're going to tell. So having that kind of unique or different style background allows me to bring in material or create jokes and stories that other people can't tell. I would say of all the various art forms in the world, two are traditionally American, and that's jazz music and stand-up comedy. Even with that background, I mean, it can be brought out here, and audiences, because of the exposure of American media around the world, understand what it's supposed to be with the blossoming of YouTube, and really, stand-up has gotten this uh, huge explosion around the world in the last five or ten years. But Hong Kong has some funny, maybe peculiar idiosyncrasies to drop in too. Just ask Vivek, who was born and brought up in Hong Kong. I would say Hong Kong has a lot of funny things, but very often because Hong Kong is such a fast city, we may not notice it. And that's where a comedian comes in, where his point is to observe and find the funny in everything in life. You've got everything interesting, for example, you have guys polishing their shoes on escalator with brushes on the sides, you know, you've got that. You've got people trying to cram in food while they're reading the newspaper. You've got people cutting their nails on the train. You've got women who look different when they get on the bus and when they get off because they did their makeup. So a lot of funny things are happening all the time. It's just a matter of noticing and remembering it. So yeah, Hong Kong is a very funny place in my opinion. I have a lot of situations where I'm on the train, people sitting next to me, talking over me, and I'm just sitting there going like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and I know everything they're saying, you know. So it's a lot of fun for me as well. However, my ability to speak Cantonese has allowed me to, first of all, understand the culture very deeply because I'm part of it, and two is to just basically experience Hong Kong just like anybody else here. So I've really become a local. Adding that little extra touch of the Americas, from Canada and with a bow to the US, is Tonya, who took a course and learned her stand-up comedy in Hong Kong, where she was born. First thing that I learned is how to position myself on stage, all this. And also, no matter how nervous you are, as long as you don't show it, the audiences don't know. Hong Kong comedy is more political satire, TV shows, or commentary-based comedy. Whereas in America, American-style stand-up is more frequent laughters, and you laugh at everyday life stuff. 
But seriously, folks, what's going to tickle the funny bone of the 27,000 plus US citizens who live in Hong Kong? Oh man, you're Indian. You must be poor. Like, no, I'm not poor. I'm cheap. There's a difference. I have the money, I just don't spend it. Mom's always very critical of me. Like, moms like their daughters to be very pretty. And one time I asked my mom, I said, Mama, do you think I'm ugly? Yeah. And her response was, um, what do you mean by ugly? And she doesn't give me a straight with smiles. And that was a true story, by the way. So. It may be that it all boils down to the diverse, multicultural society that characterizes Hong Kong and which the U.S. richly shares. Well, first of all, the culture of comedy is very uh, set in the U.S. It's something that's been there for many, many, many years. Whereas in Hong Kong, the culture of comedy is relatively fresh and new, especially Cantonese comedy. With English comedy, people know the culture from overseas, they've learned it, so they come watching a show with that in mind. When you watch a Chinese show, you have people coming down, sitting and staring at you, and if you interact with them, they would look at you and go like, wait, what? I, but I, I, I paid for this, why, am I, why are you talking to me? And I don't know, no, you know? So people don't realize you might play a little bit with them, have some fun. You will have a lot of people coming to shows not understanding the, the, the structure, because they're thinking, why am I at a bar? I'm not a theater, like, there's a show at a bar, but this doesn't make sense, is this music? So people don't know the education behind it. Whereas in the States, it's so common, you can open up with, like a comedy shop anywhere. Just like, oh, is that a corner? I'll take it, you know? And people know, oh, comedy, let's go. I do material about living in a, a small district in the city called Shim Shui Po. It's one of the poorest districts in Hong Kong. And that was the first place that I actually had an apartment after school because I, I could afford it. People who have never been to Hong Kong would never have known that district, but are here for one or two days, can still identify it through the context of the joke. When I go to the States on vacation, I love to perform in front of new crowds, but they don't always know what they're gonna get with me. Right, because the host, he will really build me up on stage. All right guys, our next comedian comes all the way from Hong Kong. Let's give a big round of applause to Michael Dorsher! But then I walk out, the crowd's just like, what? One guy in the audience actually got upset. He grabbed his wife's arm to storm out of the club. He was like, honey, would you look at that? The Chinese are making fake white people now!